emperors would gather as many as 5,000 pairs of gladiators who would fight over four months. The game organizers, or editors, added more and more extravagant shows to accompany the gladiator fights. In fact, many experts believe, like the Colosseum, a Kuali amphitheater was... Welcome back to the channel. It's Monday. It's been a good day so far. I've spent a lot of money. I ain't even gonna lie. This got delivered. If you don't know what this is, you're gonna have to go. Whoa. If you don't know what that is, that's the drive shaft for the Rowdy Audi V2. If you wanna know more about this car, I'm already gonna hit it with the plug. Make sure you subscribe. Go over, check out the build playlist, and you can, which we need to. Which, honestly, I need to add some content to because I've made some content. Well, filmed it, but I haven't posted it yet. Here nor there. I'm working on it, alright? Some days it's... I do a lot of shit and I've only got so many heads to wear the hats on at one time. So, anyway. What is today's video about? Today, we are dealing with the front suspension on the S6. This is probably one of the last chapters of this build that we're going to be going through less of like cleaning it and well putting it on uh we also are going to go ahead and do front brakes front and rear brakes on it but let's open this box up and see what we got here so courtesy of 034 motorsports there is no promo code in this one but uh, we are getting this now what is this? This first is a t-shirt that Austin from AZ Euros has given us. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. I need another work shirt. You know what? Matter of fact, we might just throw this on today. I think this will be today's attire. Sorry, Hoonigan. But what's in this box? So inside of this box, we have got the 034 density line kit. Now, all of these are the same poly density, um, it's the same type of rubber that's in the like track density or street density motor mounts. Excuse me. You can get those. You can get those for your B5 S4, your C5, your A4. Get it for everything. Um, but these are the track density kit for the C5 A6. Now this is going to give you a lot more response. There's going to be a lot less flex in these bushings here, which ultimately is going to translate to more contact patch on the road better handling of your car ultimately overall it's just going to translate to a better feeling ride and a lot more aggressive when you attack those corners so to match with these to match with the 034 control arms which we have all of like we've got all the bits we've even got the upper the density line upper tower supports for them but to match it all we went ahead and went with 034's in link kit uh, the end link kit for the sway bars on the rear and where are they at? Ah, oh, here they are. We went with the front 034 end links as well for this. Now, I'm super excited about these. I've ran hot chest sway bars on my car for years and loved them. Absolutely loved them. But I've always been curious of how the 034 Motorsports uh, end links make the car feel. With the way the sway bar, uh, sway bar works, it's designed to keep the wheels planted on the ground. Well, the factory bushings flex a lot, and there's a lot of movement. They're also notorious for like actually coming out of their sleeves. 034 made these guys, which are basically a chunk of billet with a bearing inside and a lock joint. So this thing can A, never come apart, B, is always going to be in a loaded position, essentially, and C... It's going to transmit the maximum amount of grip from the sway bar into the tires. It's worth mentioning this. The 034 kit that we did purchase does come with brand new sway bar end links that are also poly density. However, they're just not quite what we want. That's why we went with these ones from 034 instead. It's not because we didn't want these. These will be fantastic. But the customer did say, you know what? I'd like a little bit extra. So, spend the money the wisest way we can, every way we can. I'm super anxious for this. I've been wanting to do these for a long time. And I've got a customer. 
and this customer decided, you know what? This sounds like the best bang for the buck. Let's do it. So what better car to be doing it on than an Audi S6? So now we got a plan? Let's do the thing. Let's get into it. Thank you, thank you. Can you hand me the line behind you too, please? The airline? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, I might need that. I'm gonna be telling Dad to hold that first. Okay. <coughs> you scared me, I wanna try. Give it a go. I'm a hurt. <laughs> Is that cool? Let's get this thing off of you. So the top of these uh, tie rod ends right here, there's an Allen head inside of them. And sometimes you need to just uh, loosen them up, make taking them out of their cradle. There you go. <laughs> oh, so much easier. So much easier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. Take that out of there. Boom. Just a little quick tip. It kind of makes life a little bit easier when you want to get the tie rod ends out. Um, yeah. I know these things are, are kind of being, they can be a pain in the butt to get out of here. Sometimes they seize up, sometimes the bolt grabs. You're like, how do you get it to come loose? It's not like, they're really not like your normal, atypical tie rod end joint. So I just think it's, even though it's German, it's very clever that they went ahead and put that in the bottom of there for us. So let's keep going. You cleaning or are you working? Yeah, yeah. You or are you playing? What are you doing? Wait a second. Hold on, stop. <laughs> You're a good ball. You're a good ball. We're gonna get back to work now. So what do we got? We got hey, the brake. We got the brake pads all off here. All right. So the next piece we're gonna go after now that we got that off is we're gonna go ahead and get this bolt out and then get this uh, shock tower out. Probably should take the sway bar off just to relieve that tension and disconnect the two sides. We've already got the axle nuts off. Um, we're not replacing the rotors right now. These rotors are actually okay. There's a there's a little bit of edge to them, but I'm pretty sure that uh, new pads, as long as the new pads contact inside of here, I'm not too worried about it. Maybe have this turned if I can. There might be enough meat in there. We can go ahead and have them turn. If not, we'll just put new rotors on it. So for now, we're going to just, we are just going to leave it just like this, but we're going to go ahead and get this sensor out. Hey, Actually, wait, we could probably there. just disconnect it up here. And they're hurting. All right. Thank you. Thank you. High five. Oh, shoot. I don't want to. Oh, you don't want to touch daddy's dirty hands? Nux? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I kind of deserve that. All right, let's get this out of there. Fish it down around. Back up through there. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Here. Oh, you're to go somewhere here. And then that, this connection there. There's a little plastic clip right back here. If you push it just right. 
if you push on this clip right here, it's kind of hard to see, I know, because the glare, but there's a little retaining clip right there. Maybe I can shove a spotlight on this in post. But there's a retaining clip right here you need to take loose, and that's going to just, like, pop this piece out, and then these just kind of twist out, but this one's not going to give you enough. So that'll take that loose. That right, you don't got to take the ABS sensor out of here. I'm going to be very real. Uh, trying to take the ABS sensor out of the hub, unless you need to replace it, I wouldn't try. Uh, it's just, majority of the time they work, but when you go to remove them, they break. So, or they're broken already, and then you got to take it out, and so you're just, it's whatever. Uh, I don't quite, like, it, it's just, yeah, it's one of those things that just, don't do it. This is easier just to disconnect it. So disconnect that, that'll come off. The spindle is gonna come off with the two lower control arms separate from the axle. We'll get into that here in a minute, but first let's get the sway bar off and then we're gonna focus on getting the shock and uprights assembly out of the car. In order to get these bolts out to do replace these upper control arms, I have seen people finesse wrenches in here before. It's very easy to do, but if you're going to change the upper tower mount out, you got to take this control. You got to take the upper tower bracket out. So it's easier just to take this entire assembly out now, because well, the, oh, because at the end of the day, the lower control arms are coming out also. So it's like just disassemble the entire thing. It's 20 times simpler, don't waste your time trying to screw around and trying to like take bits and pieces of it off when at the end of the day, you can just work on the ground here and it's gonna be 20 times simpler, is it? My nose is growing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get in, back into it. <laughs> wasn't so bad we got the top one out got the lower we still got to get the lower bit out there but i figured i'd go ahead and uh swap out these upper control arm mounts here you can actually see this one really has some damage on it you can kind of see all the rips and tears that are right there that's all flex this one isn't so bad but that one yeah that one's poop so we got the brand new 034 one so these ones should stand up a lot better and last a lot longer. Now, they are very similar. You might say, oh, there's no difference. Trust me when I say, there's a difference. And you won't, you know what? Yeah. Just trust me when I say there is a big difference in how the, how the, like rubber is like anything else. Like you change a chemical, make, it's like a, it's like butter, right? Butter is like two molecules away from being a Ziploc bag or a Walmart plastic grocery bag. So to say they're the same, but different 
is about the biggest comp, not even compliment, is like the biggest comparison. Like they are the same, but add a couple molecules and they become way more rigid than the original ones are. So I can't wait to drive this thing. I think it's gonna be, it, it's, I just can't wait to drive it. I wanna see how much tighter do, refreshing the front, refreshing the suspension on this is gonna do. It should just change the entire dynamic of how the car runs, not even runs, and the entire dynamic of how the car drives, holds the road, and ultimately provides maximum amount of grip for this like 10 ton whale. So, um, also, it's really, in this kit, you guys, inside the 034 kit, uh, 034 Motorsports provides you all brand new hardware for every single bolt, nut, bit that you're putting on there. I mean, what more can you ask for? I did, whoa, oh, 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 we did? I probably mentioned it in the laps in the voiceover already, but this control arm did give us a little bit of fight. Trying to, I'm sorry, not that one. This one right here, there's a fair amount of corrosion down inside of there. You're gonna wanna make sure to get that all cleaned up out of there as the next round of control arms that you put in are just gonna make get worse and worse and worse. This is where I would highly recommend using anti-seize when you're putting everything back together. Keep in mind, Audi decided to put non-ferrous metal with ferrous metal and effectively science says that doesn't work and we will corrode so that corrosion ultimately causes problems in the end of the day so we that's what we're trying to prevent we're trying to prevent the corrosion that layer that will eventually happen especially if you live in areas with any high salt or um, a lot of snow road treatment that stuff all that's going to get down inside your joints and just kind of make it all gross so as so much of that we can prevent, the better, but ultimately, we can only do so much. So, let's get back to putting the suspension together and uh, getting these lower bits out of here. It's kind of an epic fail just now on my behalf. I kind of went off and just like, oh, let's replace this bushing, and I never turned the camera on, didn't show you guys how it's done, so my bad. We'll have to do it on the other side. But what you can tell is if you look at the top of these tower bushings, can see how split up and all the age and abuse of this thing bouncing around in there so we got new ones on here once again from 034 it's part of the kit that we got and we got these new these new ones installed are going to provide us a lot more stability with the way the shock physically moves around inside of the tower here so we're gonna get these reinstalled and we're gonna get these reinstalled and then move on to those uh lower control arms there still haven't got them out i'll get to them though i promise it's gonna happen so for this next little bit here, guys, um, we got to attack these two. Oh, you shithead. All right. Be right back. All right. Round two. So this next little part, we got to attack this bolt here and this nut. Same thing back here. In this one's case, round, round three now. Dead battery, dead battery. Let's do this. All right, so with this bolt, you guys are gonna have a little hole right here that you can slide this one through. And back here, this one might actually get a little tight coming out. Sometimes they like to get... <sighs> anyway, we're moving on. I'll, shy, I'll edit it in post. Anyway, there's lines right here. You might have problems getting it past it. So if you do, just put a little pry bar on there. We'll deal with it as it happens, but it should just pop right out. So suspension is kind of an interesting one. These cars are not difficult. They're not hard to work on. There is some nuances to doing things on them, but it's relatively simple. Like, I, um, right now I'm in the 
air quotes future because this is 2023. The video that I just that you guys are I'm technically shooting an outro for because I thought I would edit it down a lot more and condense it, but I really never did. It was better in a long format, trying to illustrate everything that goes on with these cars. Like there's a ridiculous amount. Right now we're actually, speaking of a year later, the car is now in for its second major round of maintenance and we are doing all the DIY things, all the tutorials. We're doing bumper covers. I mean, season two, of C5 S6 ownership things is very real. It's just gonna be fun. Just make it, put it this way. It's why every single reason why if you owned an S6 and you love this video and you were found this one, you definitely wanna to subscribe to the channel. More content from the S6. Now we're diving into putting BC coilovers on it. We're doing all the timing components on it as well. We're doing a valve body on this car as well because it's starting to get a little funky and it was just rebuilt. What else is there? Is there anything else? That said, to be continued, stay tuned for part two of S6 refresh videos, suspension refresh. Titling a video is so is probably titling a video and making it capturable and making it, oh my gosh, number one hardest part of like making content, like real talk vlog moment. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I'm Audi. Oh, <laughs> oh,